In this lesson, we're going to learn about the basics of exponential functions. What exactly is an exponential function? Well, an exponential function is a function whose exponent is a variable. Exponential functions take on the form y equals a times b to the x power. Notice that the exponent is the variable x. This is characteristic of an exponential function. In an exponential function, the a and b numbers represent certain things. a, for example, represents the y-intercept, which is the value of y when x is 0. This actually makes perfect sense, because if we substitute 0 in place of x, we have a times b to the 0, and anything to the 0 power is 1, which means y is a. So the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, a. So, to make life simple, when I want to know the y-intercept, I simply need to look at the a value. Now, how about b? Well, b represents the factor. The factor is what you multiply by. Take a look at this example here. Here we have the function y equals 5 times 2 to the x. We know that this is an exponential function because the exponent is a variable. We want to create an input and an output table. We can do that very easily. We first look for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the a value, or 5. So when x is 0, y is 5. We now go ahead and we use the b value, or the factor, in order to create the additional outputs. The multiplier, or factor, is 2. Notice the pattern in the table. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. And now we've created the input and output table for the function y equals 5 times 2 to the x. Here's an example for you to try. y equals 3 times 2 to the x. Can you identify the y-intercept and the factor, and then create the input and output table? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's see how you did. Here we have 3 for the a value. That's the y-intercept. The y-intercept of this function, the value when x is 0, is 3. The b value represents the factor. Here the factor is 2. Now let's look at the table of inputs and outputs. We know the y-intercept is 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. The factor is 2 so we're multiplying by 2 to generate the next outputs. Here's the input and output table for the inputs 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the function y equals 3 times 2 to the x. Let's look at another example. f of x equals 144 times 1 half to the x. Notice this time I didn't use y equals, and instead I used function notation and wrote f of x equals. This means the same thing as y equals. See if you can identify the y-intercept and the factor, and then see if you can create the input and output table with the inputs going from 0 to 4. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. We begin by identifying the y-intercept, which is the a value. 144. We then identify the factor, which is the b value, 1 half. So the factor is 1 half. To create the input and output table, we start with the y-intercept, 144. The factor is 1 half, so we're multiplying by 1 half to get the next outputs. Remember, multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. When we deal with exponential functions, we're always talking about multiplication, so we'll never say dividing by 2. Instead, we would say multiplying by 1 half. Something worth noticing in our input and output tables are the patterns in the y column. Notice in the first function, the y values are growing. They're increasing. 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. When an exponential function is increasing, we have what's called exponential growth. Compare that with the second example. Notice the pattern in the y column here. 
144, 72, 36, 18, 9. This function shows the y values are decreasing. When the y values are decreasing in an exponential function, we have what's called exponential decay. So let's talk a little bit more about exponential growth and exponential decay, and let's take a look at the graph of an exponential function. The graph of an exponential function is called an exponential curve. The graph would look like this if the function was increasing, and like this if the function is decreasing. As we mentioned a moment ago, when an exponential function increases, we have what's called exponential growth. And when an exponential function decreases, we have what's called exponential decay. This behavior is very predictable, because it all comes down to the b value or the factor. If the b value or factor is greater than 1, you have exponential growth. If the b value or factor is between 0 and 1, then you have exponential decay. The factor will never be negative, nor will the factor ever be exactly 0 or 1. The definition of an exponential function requires that the factor either be between 0 and 1, or greater than 1. Let's take a look at four functions. For each of these functions, can you determine whether the function shows growth or decay? Here they are. Remember, to determine whether a function shows growth or decay, we're simply looking at the b value or the factor. If the factor is greater than 1, we have exponential growth. If the factor is between 0 and 1, we have exponential decay. See if you can determine whether each function shows growth or decay. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. In our first exercise, we have a factor of 5. 5 is greater than 1. Since the factor is greater than 1, we have a function that exhibits exponential growth. A function that exhibits exponential growth is an increasing exponential function, and its graph would look something like this. In exercise 2, we have a factor of 2 thirds. Here, the factor is between 0 and 1, so we have a function that exhibits exponential decay. A function that exhibits exponential decay will be a decreasing exponential function, and its graph will look something like this. In exercise 3, we have a factor of 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is between 0 and 1, so once again, we have an exponential function that exhibits exponential decay. A function that exhibits exponential decay is a decreasing exponential function, and I would expect its graph to look something like this. In exercise 4, we have a factor of 1.37. Here, the factor is greater than 1. Since the factor is greater than 1, we have a function that exhibits exponential growth. A function that exhibits exponential growth is an increasing exponential function, and its graph would look something like this. And that's everything you need to know in order to get started with exponential functions. Remember, you can learn more about exponential functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.